today we're talking about narcissistic abuse, codependency recovery, because they kind of like merge together, right? And why it gets worse before it gets better. So if you are suffering from codependency, that means that you have most likely come from an unpredictable, unnurturing, invalidating home. You've come from a home where perhaps your parents were codependent or one or both of them were narcissistic or had high narcissistic traits, which implies that you, the child, grew up feeling invisible, which is devastating, absolutely devastating. Because then what happens is you are invisible to your parents, you're invisible to yourself. And what do you do, dear one? You go out into life inside this mirror, which is the matrix. You don't know it. You're trapped inside this mirror. And what do you attract? You attract people and situations and experiences in which you feel invalidated. And that is not your fault because we are more unconscious than we are conscious right so this is the issue when we are recovering from codependency it always gets worse before it gets better when we are recovering from narcissistic abuse the denial the discard the minimizing the gaslighting the smear campaigns the triangulation lions and tigers and bears oh my when we are recovering from this it always gets worse before it gets better let's talk about why when you are beginning to heal, you are facing aspects of reality that you once denied or that you were once so gaslighted to that you could you didn't know which way was up, right? When you're dealing with codependency, you are shame-based. And when you're when you are a narcissist, you are shame-based. But when you are a shame-based codependent, What's happening with the narcissist, the narcissist is projecting their shame onto you because narcissism is about projection, right? It's about hurting the other person and codependents and those of us with high empathy, victims of narcissistic abuse, we absorb this, these emotions from the narcissist. So we have our own shame and now we're carrying their projected shame. It's a mess. So when you start to recover, whether you are, you know, in a relationship with a narcissistic boss, right? Like that's your experience or you have a narcissistic friend or you have a narcissistic lover, a narcissistic husband, a narcissistic wife. When you begin to awaken, it is so painful because suddenly you're dealing with reality in a way that is like slapping you upside the head. There, you will notice that Things that you once ignored, suddenly you start making connections like, oh my God, he said that, or oh my God, she said that. That was a lie. That was an absolute lie. And so it always gets worse before it gets better because in order to heal, you have to bring things to the surface. This is how we evolve as a species. This is how even consciousness evolves. So when we are awakening, right, when we're recovering, recovering is about a spiritual, emotional, and even a psychological and cognitive awakening. It's like, where was I? I remember having these moments like, where have I been? I was living below the veil, but I thought I was conscious. I was not conscious. I was acting out childhood programming. I felt unworthy. I brought that to everything. Everything that I did was laced in you're not worthy. You're not good enough. And it, it haunted me. And what did I attract? I attracted people who stuck their fingers in that wound and exploited my emotions and exploited my vulnerabilities. That is a telltale sign of a narcissist. Somebody who knows what your pain point is and when necessary, they will exploit that pain point to cripple you so that you cannot have the wherewithal and the energy to go up against them. So it always gets worse before it gets better. And it really, it's, I see it in my coaching program. The first part of my coaching program, it's all about awakening and understanding what happened. And the second point is when the second phase of the coaching program is helping people come face to face with the consequences of living below the veil of consciousness, dealing with reality. Trauma victims, our problem is reality. It's, we were in denial of how bad it was. And I'm sick and tired of people shaming victims. Sick and tired of people, and even some psychologists and therapists out there just saying, that saying, that, that suggests that the, um, the narcissistic abuse is exaggerated or our emotional experiences of narcissistic abuse is exaggerated. That's coming from someone who has never experienced, experienced narcissistic abuse, who has never experienced this type of psychological invasion, right? It's a, it's like a psychological rape 
when you are dealing with a narcissist who finds pleasure in exploiting you and gain in exploiting you, okay? So when you are recovering from codependency and you're realizing that maybe you're involved with someone with high narcissistic traits who doesn't want to look at themselves and who will insist that you are wrong, even when you say, can we go into therapy, right? They might go, but they're going with the intention of perhaps you know, tricking the therapist into thinking you're the bad one or you're the crazy one, right? You see it all the time. That happened to me. My ex wanted to go into therapy and his agenda was to convince the therapist that I was crazy. Didn't work out that way. The one, Actually, two therapists were able to pinpoint him and understand what was happening. Thank goodness. But I hear it all the time in my coaching program and one-to-one -one clients where I ask this person to go into therapy and they only went into therapy because they were convinced that they were going to be able to bamboozle and schmooze and love bomb the therapist into going against me. And you know what? Unfortunately, sometimes that does happen. So if you're codependent and you're waking up to this reality that you might have attracted someone with narcissistic traits and you want to heal and you're on this path and you're realizing they don't want to heal, they have no interest in going deep into the relationship and fixing what's wrong, that's going to make things a lot worse for you before it gets better because you've got decisions to make, right? About where you see the rest of your life going. Can you really work with someone or live with someone who's not interested in participating in the marriage? And a marriage is no different than a business. You need a viable, interested partner who is investing in this marriage. Marriage is like a business, right? It has legal consequences, financial consequences, even medical consequences. Your spouse is your next of kin. They will make the decisions for you. This is very serious stuff. And we have, maybe we entered into marriage unknowingly and unconscious, but as you start to awaken, things will get worse because now you're facing the consequences of your unconscious choices, right? And if you have to take accountability, gentle accountability for how you got where you got. And that makes healing difficult because then here comes the shame. Oh my God, what have I done, right? It's a very rocky road, but it's so important that you continue on this path. If you are recovering from narcissistic abuse, coming face to face, this is what really to me is like one of the most difficult things to heal from when you're dealing with narcissistic abuse. Let's say your partner had a double life that you knew nothing about, right? You're married 30 years and this person's been, you know, screwing people left and right and lying about it. You thought he was doing it or you thought she was doing it, but you couldn't prove it, but your heart told you there was something wrong and there were signs and symptoms, but she or he was always able to rationalize them away and, of course, made you think that you were the wrong one, that you were cheating, that you were crazy, and you were just insecure, right? All this gaslighting crapola, okay? When you start waking up from narcissistic abuse, oh my God, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. You start coming face to face with not only is the now a lie, but your memories are a lie. Everything that you have recorded in your memory bank is now clashing with the reality that everything may have been a lie and everything may have been purposeful. There may have been an agenda to marry you from the beginning, to groom you when you were in college, to groom you when you were in high school, all to set you up so that this person who is highly below the veil of consciousness, although there are narcissists who know what they're doing, there are websites that teach people how to do this against codependence. They exist, okay? Sick, but it happens, all right? We have to be aware of this. Those of us who, trauma victims, people from abusive backgrounds, we are the targets of this type of abuse. That's why you're not playing the victim if you're learning. You're not playing the victim if you're explaining. You're not playing the victim if you're honestly out there trying to figure out your stuff and you're saying, hey, wait a minute, this, this happened to me. And yes, I was a victim of this type of abuse and I'm going to learn everything I can about it so I can empower myself, so I can break the cycle, so I can have a chance at living a conscious and deliberate and abundant life. And maybe my children can too, okay? So dear ones, it's going to get worse before it gets better. When you are recovering from narcissistic abuse, and in the case of someone who's had a double life, right? What is so awful is that now even your emotions are being doubted. Are you kidding me? This is a psychological fracture that takes place. And it takes, in my opinion, people who have been there, right? People who understand this journey. 
people who can speak your language, people who can understand how dark it can be. Those people, whether they're your friends, whether they're people at church, whatever, a 12-step group, ACOA, um, you know, CODA, Al-Anon, even AA, if you're struggling with addictions, very oftentimes, those of us from unpredictable, codependent, narcissistic homes, for instance, we struggle with addictions. That is not, that is a symptom of something deeper. Addiction in most cases is related to trying to avoid and flee from emotional pain. There's tension in our body and we don't know how to process it because we're arrested cognitively due to this type of abuse, okay? And unpredictability. When you grow up in an unpredictable home, you don't have time to develop life skills for how to be happy. You're trying to survive. So if you're a 50 year old adult or 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 or 100 year old adult and you've been forced to live in trauma and you've been forced to live into, in survival, do not allow anyone to shame you because you haven't figured out how to set a boundary. You haven't figured out how to love yourself. Are you kidding me? Dear one, you've been living in survival. You've been trying to get through a day and that is not your fault. So I just hope that this video, short video by the way, um, allows anybody who is struggling with, oh my God, I'm waking up and things are getting worse. They will get better. You are developing the ability to see what's really wrong. You are helping push yourself forward. Before we can heal something, we have to deal with the something. We have to feel the something. We have to see it before we can change it. One of my um, most favorite lines that I use all the time in my videos and in my online coaching program is, you cannot fix a hole in the wall that you cannot see. Yes, dear one, it's going to get worse before it gets better, but I encourage you to hang on. I encourage you to learn, and I encourage you to seek therapy and healing in every way that you can, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, and physically. Take care of your body. Do meditations. Avoid people who bring you down. Avoid people who shame you. Seek out experiences that allow you to connect with nature, to connect with animals. They're two of my most favorite things in the world, nature and animals, right? Take care of your body. It's so important that you eat right, you nurture yourself, that you put lotion on your body. Get in the habit of touching yourself in a beautiful way. Look in the mirror and tell yourself you are worthy, you are beautiful, and you are divine, and this is not your fault, and things will get better. And I promise you, one day, they will. My name is Lisa A. Romano. I am the Breakthrough Life Coach, and I'm an expert in the field of codependency and healing from narcissistic abuse. I have six best-selling best books currently and about to release the seventh, so I, so look, look out for that one. I'm also the creator of the 12-week Breakthrough Coaching Program, where I take people who are suffering from codependency and narcissistic abuse, adult children of alcoholics and, and alike, who have been living below the veil of consciousness and didn't know it. And I help teach them the life skills they need to empower themselves to break through these patterns and programs and to live a conscious life. We do it over three months together with me and my team. And then you get to keep the program for a minimum of three years, which is pretty cool because we want you to repeat it over and over and over because this truly is a deprogramming process. Thank you so much for being here. You can check me out at www.lisaaromano.com. Registration is now open and we look forward to seeing many of you there. Bye for now.